where a man went into a nightclub killing 49 people over a choice of how they lived their life. What was most disturbing to me is things I've seen in social media, the news, and all over places, hatred uh, between Christians. It, it, when somebody wants to win something, and the person I'm referring to here is the devil, but they want to get in and they want to divide and conquer. That's the best way is to destroy it from the inside. And hate creeps in. Hate will set in your heart. Hate will stay with you. Hate will protrude out into the congregation of a church and eventually destroy it. I'm not saying we have the problem here, but I want it to be uh, cognizant of it, aware of it. Romans 12, we'll start in verse 9 and read through 21. It says, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to, to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. I'll tell you tonight a little story about myself. And uh, when I, generally everybody here knows I was in Iraq. And one of the things it, when you're in Iraq is a mindset. My wife's smiling at me because I'm telling another Iraq story. But uh, your mindset changes. You you. You, it's, it's a life and death situation. Somebody's trying to kill you, in which you return, you try to kill them. And what comes of that is a pure and utter hatred. A hatred for the way they live, a hatred for the way they look, a hatred for the way they uh, talk, uh, things they do. It doesn't matter. You just hate these people because all you see, no matter where you're at, and even when I got back here to the States, is it's just somebody of that type person that is trying to kill you. You have, it's a hate that just takes over your life. And as I uh, got out of the Marine Corps and got back into civilian life, it stayed with me. The hate that you come up with between each other, it'll stay with you. But what got me through it, and I want you to turn over there, is John 3.16. A very popular verse, most of us know it by heart, but I want you to turn there and, act, and read it. Verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I want you, to, if you wouldn't mind, to underline the word whosoever. The thing that helped me get past who they were, where they are, whether, you know, Muslim, the Islamic, the, that type people, uh, people from that area, is, is the word whosoever. Jesus loved whosoever. He didn't, he didn't discriminate between white, black, brown, yellow, red, whatever. Didn't ma don't matter what religion you're in. It's whosoever. And that's what helped get me through... Um, the times of getting past hating them. And it's still a struggle. It's something I still struggle with. And that you'll struggle with these things, but you've got to constantly go back in Scripture. And as you see in verse 12, it says, continuing instant in prayer. You have to stay in prayer about these things. It's not just something you can uh, do one time and move on. Back in verse 9, I want to look at a couple of words and a few points 
tonight. It says, um, love without dissimulation. Dissimulation is giving a false appearance or to hide a feeling or opinion. Our love has to be real. We can all tell, it might not be right away, but we can all tell when somebody's not being real, not being sincere. You, and, and, and it can't be phony. We have to, Jesus' Jesus's love was real by sending his son, his, or God's love was real by sending Jesus. His love produced action. Our love must, must produce action. And this is one of the things that we as Christians need to guard ourselves with and be careful with is we're supposed to hate the sin and love the sinner. And we'll get a little more into that as we go on. But if you also look in verse 9, it says, Abhor that which is evil. Abhor means to detest. What did I say detest was in reference to is hate. We must hate the things that people do, as I stated, and not the person. Make, give some for instances. We should love the gays, the lesbians, bisexuals, transgender people. We should love those that are in the Islamic, uh, the ISIS type deal. We should love the person. That doesn't mean we need to be tolerant or accept what they do. We need to hate the sin. If you look down in verse 10, it says, Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. One of the things that would help, will help us draw close, that will help us get rid of the hate that we may have in our hearts is to fellowship together, not just a fifth Sunday. I think I've mentioned it in other messages I've preached is, is getting together outside of church, going and having lunch with somebody, meeting up, going to a ball game or what have you, preferring to do that versus those of the law that are lost. We need, the lost people will deter us from what God wants us to do. We'll, we'll uh, take our mind off the things that we should be doing. They'll try to take us from church attendance. They'll try to take us from activities that are held in the church. They'll, they'll try to distract us however, we, however they can, no matter how good a person they may be. They, the, the, devil, the devil can still work through them and use them to get to draw you away from where you need to be. If you would, turn over to... Um, or actually look at, down at verse 16. It says, Be of the same mind one toward another. Now turn over to 1 Peter 2. First Peter 2 and verse 17 says, Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. I want to draw your attention there to, to the part that says, Love the brotherhood. The brotherhood here is referring to our uh, fellow Christians, the, the people in your church. We need to prefer them and love them. And, ha and if, we're, if it says here to, in verse 16 back in Romans 12, to be of the same mind one toward another, how can we do that if we're not loving each other? It was kind of kind of goofy, you know. It, it seems kind of silly to turn and hug and say "I lo love you" to the person to the left or right of you. But how often, outside of somebody that's in your family, do you actually tell somebody that you love them? And it's kind of weird as a guy, you know. Uh, uh, Brother Phil say or the one that uh, anytime you talk to him, I think Brother Phil's even referred to it as Erica Pacey. No matter when you talk to him, how long it's been since you've seen him last, hey, I love you, brother. And it is the weirdest thing to look another guy in the face and say, I love you too, you know. It, but you need to mean it. And you should be able to express that. Um, it said in, back in verse 9, let love be without dissimulation. We need to not hide it. Um, not put it away. Not, not be scared to express it, you know, as, as guys. It's, it's, you know, we're supposed to... <laughs> You know, the tough guy, macho man type thing, scratch and burp and spit, you know. But we need to be able to break down, break ourselves down and, listen, and um, be submissive to the Lord and love each other. 
And I'm not, in, in no way am I saying, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, sit around and sing kumbaya with everybody and just be tolerant and, you know, go drink tea with everybody. And, you know, but we need to have a love for the lost. We need to have a love for those in the church. Part of, part of loving is forgiving offenses and moving on. And in, in a way, and, and when you forgive somebody, generally you would need to go to prayer to ask the Lord to help you forgive it. When you're praying for somebody, and like it says in verse 12, continuing instant in prayer, it is hard to hate somebody or be upset at somebody when you're praying for them. You can't, you can't just stay mad at somebody and pray that the Lord affects them, pray that the Lord would bless them, pray that you'd be able to have forgiveness to them. We must love each other. If you look at verse 14, it says, Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Turn over to John 15. And this is something I think we all, and it's something that really stuck with me that need, uh, and jumped out at me and stuck with me, that we all need to remember. John 15 and verse 18, we'll read 18 through 27. Actually, 17 through 27, sorry. Verse 17 says, These things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world... Therefore, the world hateth you. Remember the, wor the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his, than his Lord. If they, if they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But, also. but all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which n none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their, in their law. They hated me without cause, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the, from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. This is leading up to Jesus' crucifixion. He's talking to his disciples, and he's reminding them. And it's, it applies 2,000 plus years later to us now, that they don't hate Chris. They don't hate Brother Don, they don't hate Miss Sandy. They hate Jesus. They hate what we um, portray, what we live for, what we stand for. They, it is said, they hated Jesus before they hated us. The world, and there it also states, they'd have no problem with us. They'd leave us alone if we were just like them. But because there's something different about us, they hate us. They they try to they, they want to persecute us. They want to uh, do everything they can to run us in the ground. But again, it is not Chris or Brother Fred or Stephen that makes them uncomfortable. It's what they see in us, and that hopefully that's Jesus that they see in us, and it's somehow being expressed to them, and it's God working on them, and they don't like the discomfort that they're experiencing. If you'll go back to Romans 12. This is something that, again, I, had to, I, I have to look in myself and really um, keep in check a lot sometimes. Verse 17 says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things 
honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. It is not our jo job to judge. It's not our job to be the jury. It's not our, our job to seek revenge and to get revenge. What is our job, as it states there, uh, is to, in verse 18, to live peaceably with all men. Not just those that we like. Not just those that we have things in common with. But notice the little three-letter word there next to men. It's all. Doesn't matter who they are, what color, race, religion, whatever. All men. We need to live peaceably with them. And in verse 17, and not, it also mentioned in verse 19, is rec not, not to seek evil for evil or, or uh, avenge ourselves. How great is it, or how much do you want to when somebody cuts you off, when you're going down the highway, to hurry up, get, her, get back in front of them and, and cut them back off? Or drive by them and give them a dirty look or something. You want to get back at them, right? That's not our job. And, you know, uh, one thing, I can't remember who said it, but something was pointed out to me. You never know what's going on in their life. You know, they might be trying to get to the hospital. They might have had a bad day. And sometimes that's hard to remember in the moment. I get it. But we need to think, try and think big picture of things. It is our job to give it to the Lord and let him take care of it. We all want to live a peaceful life. We want to just, you know, we don't want to be high strung. We're worried about a bunch of different things and moving on. <clears throat> the best way we can do that is to give it over to the Lord. Let him take care of the, what, something that somebody that offended you or did you wrong. Let, just, let, just give it to the Lord and let him deal with it. Be amazed at how much more um, peaceful your life will be. How much uh, more effective as a Christian you'll be able to be. God is the ultimate judge. God will, it, whether it be now or later, when they face them at the judgment seat of Christ, if they're not saved, we all know where, where, where the unsaved end up, and that's an eternity in hell. If you look at verse 20 and 21, I think it wrap, wraps everything up pretty good. It'll be a bit early tonight, but... It says, therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome evil of evil, but overcome evil with good. In combat, if you wound an enemy combatant, it is your, more, your obligation to provide treatment to them. Whether it was you that shot them or somebody else that shot them, it is still your obligation our obligation to take care of them, to give, provide water, to provide bandages, and um, even fly them, excuse me, I'm having a little dry mouth tonight, fly them, medevac them out to a U.S. base and take care of them to the extent. If we can do that in a time of war, we can do that here where it's peace. And back in uh, verse 13, it talks about dis distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to hospitality. Look at the given to hospitality. We should have part of uh, a loving spirit is being hospitable to people, letting them go first in line. Uh, if somebody needs a drink of water and you have a drink of water, get them some water. Somebody's hungry. One of the th hardest things for me to do is, is uh, uh, give the the bum down at the baseball game or on the street corner, food or money, just because uh, it's my nature. I go get a job. That's what I think. But we should be able to give them things they need. Be hospitable to them. Be not overcome with evil, of evil, but overcome evil with good. A kind word. I just lost the saying. You know where I was going with it, though. Kindness kills hate. A loving spirit will kill hate. How did, how did Jesus overcome the things that they did to him on the cross, leading up to the cross, the persecution? It was his love for mankind, for 
His creation. John 15, 13 says, Greater love hath no man than this, that, the, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Jesus faced the ultimate hate, the ultimate persecution. Yet he loved whosoever enough that he went through and died, and died for us so that we could have eternal life, so we could have salvation. We can love somebody for calling us a name. We can love somebody because even though they might be of a different lifestyle choice. We can love somebody because they are of a different political view. Life's not as serious as we make it. Jesus preferred to be around those of like fellowship and is, the, and is the mind that we should all strive to be the same in. He gave the greatest blessing he could give in that he gave his love. It was real love and he did not hide it. And as, as we all know, he hates the sin and loves the person. Dear Lord, thank you for the opportunity to come to your house tonight, Lord. Lord, I ask that you would Help us to show you through our love, Lord, that we would love each other, prefer to be around each other, prefer the things of you, Lord. Lord, that we would, uh, through your love, be a light to this world, Lord. Lord, I ask that you give us safety as we go home, Lord. Be with the pastor and his family as they, they're traveling, Lord. Be with those on mission trips, that they would have safety, Lord, and that they would be able to be a blessing to the missionaries on the field, Lord, and that they'd be able to uh, help win souls for you. In Jesus' name I pray.